In his hometown of Melbourne and across Australia, he's built dozens of them, including Australia's tallest building, the Rialto, and Melbourne's vast new casino. But Bruno's life took what could have been a ruinous tumble a couple of years back when he was charged with conspiracy to bribe a federal police officer. After a gruelling and hugely expensive trial, he was acquitted last month and in typical Bruno style has bounced back with plans for a new building, the world's tallest. When Bruno Grollo, the builder of some of Australia's largest man-made monoliths, felt the need to rebuild himself, to meditate and unwind after a 13-month criminal trial, it was a work of nature that Bruno the Builder came to contemplate. It was much uh, better to meditate in a place like that than it is in a city where there's a lot of stress. You become very calm, your physiology just settles down did meditation get you through the trial? I think it helped me a lot, yes. I think that uh, I could have been a physiological wreck if I hadn't have meditated. <laughs> the Grollo family threw a party in late June this year after a jury found Bruno not guilty of conspiring to bribe a federal police officer. It was the end of a bitter process that began five long years ago with police raids in his home and office. Now it was all over, bar the shout. You, you need a couple of drinks here, old How much did your defence cost? Do you know? Uh, it cost about $10 million. Isn't there, a, isn't there, in fact, a belief in Australia that you get off because you can afford the best defence? Well, I think you've got to put up a, a good defence. I mean, um, because the prosecution team put up a very good fight. The average person can't do that. Can't afford it, uh, and I really feel sorry for a lot of people. I'm sure there's a lot of people in jail that shouldn't be there. It really is uh, criminal how uh, so many people just plead guilty just because they can't afford to fight. It's a terrible situation uh, that, we're, as a society, we're in. Grollo had long believed that the Australian Federal Police had it in for him for reasons he claims he still can't fathom. He hired a Victorian private detective and former commando, John Flanagan, to find out who was after him and why. And Bruno always claimed it was Flanagan acting on his own who offered a $7,000 bribe to a policeman for that information. How did you get into that mess in the first place? I mean, how did you manage to, to hire this detective? I mean, surely you must be kicking yourself. Oh, well, I'm not kicking myself. I mean, uh, that's the problem when you employ a lot of people. I mean, uh, if uh, something happens on the job uh, that's serious, it always comes back to the directors. I don't mean to be impertinent with this, but if you were going to bribe someone, if you were going to bribe a copper, you'd, you'd pay a bit more than 7000 bucks, wouldn't you? You'd make sure that you did the job. Well, I wouldn't bribe a copper uh, to start with, but if I, if I'm sure that if uh, we were going to, the thing would be to do a good job, absolutely, yes. If the jury got it right, you'd think that the natural reaction of the average, successful, high-profile businessman would be anger and vengeance. Oh, still punch the wrong kind of, you know? As you will see, Bruno Grollo is anything but your average businessman. Now, John Elliott came out of something like that. He wanted revenge. Reve when does it end? It's like um, a country that's fighting with another country, and unless someone gives in and, and, uh, and wants to sort of forget the whole thing, it can just go on forever. I try not to be angry. I don't want to be angry. I don't want to carry around hate and poison in my belly. I want to just try and just have love in my heart if I can, because if you give love, you should get love back, you know. I just, I want to forget about the trial. I hate even thinking about it, you know, it was such a horrendous time. Now try and use this arm if you can, not just that one there to pull it. An ongoing, inescapable legacy of that time was the stroke which Bruno's wife, Dina, suffered in the middle of the trial. He is convinced it was a result of the stress. Do you reckon we can do five minutes or no? no. Can't do five minutes. Two minutes. Today, Bruno has become her personal trainer, refusing to believe in anything but a total recovery. Minutes. One more minute. Go three minutes. No, no, no. You can't do any more? No. All right, you've done a good job. But tomorrow we're doing three minutes. Bruno Grollo is back at work. From the age of 14, 
Up until the trial, he hadn't missed one working day for 40 years. Now he's keen to make up for that 13-month layoff from his building sites. G'day, Frank. G'day, really How are you? Good, good. It's been hard times for his company in Victoria. During the trial, the group was dropped from the state government tender list and lost hundreds of millions of dollars worth of business. It was a colour being decided for the... Uh, the, the Grollo business is a family affair, half owned by Bruno's brother Reno. During the trial, the job of running Australia's largest privately owned construction company lay with him. But the absence was also an opportunity for a third generation of Grollos. Bruno's boys, Daniel and Adam, and Reno's son, Lorenz. <laughs> the younger Grollos will eventually take over a business with a turnover of a billion dollars, assets of 150 million and several thousand employees. The business started with Bruno's father, Luigi, a struggling Italian immigrant who set up a concrete paving business in the early 50s. Bruno joined the firm at 14, fiercely ambitious, he wasn't interested in mere paths and pools. He had towering ambitions. Show me your work, so Bruno. Oh, Charles, we've done the uh, Shell headquarters down there, the Hyatt Hotel. That tall building there is uh, 101 Collins Street, 60 storeys.